glad that you're here. How are you doing? Like literally checking in. How are you feeling emotionally? How are you feeling mentally? How are you feeling energetically? How are you feeling physically? How are you feeling spiritually? How are you arriving to this conversation today? Um, I'll check in. I, um, but please check in in the comments because I really do want to know how you're doing. I am feeling much better and more well resourced and more energetic this week than last week. Last week was a doozy uh, for I'm sure uh, most of us, um, some more intensely than others, but it does, you know, wh however, whatever your experience was, was your experience. It's not a competition or a comparison. This is about really making sure that you are well. So I'm just checking in. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Like for real, for real. Um, and so today we're talking about how to ignite your mystic mission in times of chaos. And I like to get dressed up for y'all. I like to take a shower because I don't take a shower every day. Okay, I'm just confessing the truth. I'm just confessing the truth. In quarantine, I am not taking a shower every day. But I do take a shower when I come on to see y'all <laughs> and some other days. And I like to put my little lipstick on and my little lashes on and get dressed. And um, what I was thinking about even before I sat down, because I just let spirit move through me, right? I don't have notes. Well, I have some notes to talk about some things, but... But I, because there's some points I really want to make sure, but really my prayer is always let me be a vessel, let me be of service, use me, right? Like let me, let the, let spirit move through me and talk through me. Because if I was left up to my own devices of talking, if I was left up to what Laren's little brain thinks, who knows what we would talk about, right? But when I let spirit move, all is well, right? So my, my prayer is always to let spirit move through in and as me. And as I was preparing and doing my work to, to get ready for this conversation today, something that felt really, really important to name is that there are some of us who have been born, raised, and lived in chaos our whole lives, right? Whether that's from our family of origin was just chaotic and turned upside down and inside out, and we just had to learn how to calibrate and find our center in that chaos, or even if our family wasn't chaotic, but the world outside us was chaotic, whether that's to, through racial apartheid, oppression, gender oppression, sexuality oppression, right? Whether it's through living in a state of economic oppression. And we had to learn how to find our center of gravity when the world was telling us that we didn't, we weren't worthy of it, we didn't deserve it, we had to perform it, we had to earn it, right? And, and so that's important to name because I think some people are waking up right now and feeling like the chaos of the world, maybe because of the protest or because of the economy or because of COVID or whatever is like triggering the sense of uncertainty and chaos. And some of us have lived with this every single day of our lives, right? So some of us are not as shocked or rocked to our rock bottom as others. And as I said, everyone's having their own experience. This isn't a competition or a comparison, but it's important to know that every single human on the face of the planet right now is having their own unique, one of a kind experience. And some of us have been shaped by other forms of chaos and some of us haven't. And so it's important to know that as you are anchoring into your truth, as you are anchoring into your mystic mission, as I'm calling it, as you're anchoring into who you really are and what you're really here to do and who you're really here to be, that your mission is bigger than any of it. Your mission, your purpose, your reason for being is bigger than COVID, it's bigger than racism, it's bigger than white supremacy, it's bigger than gender apartheid, it's bigger than homophobia, transphobia, it's bigger than classism and capitalism, right? It's bigger than any of that. And so it's not about what the news is telling you to focus your attention on right now. Because the news will get you caught up in all kinds of distractions and then not ever be taking one step forward towards what you're actually here to do and who you're actually here to be. The news will be running interference right between your high and holy purpose so that you get caught up in fear mongering, so that you get caught up in distraction, so that you get caught up in the chaos. And that's not to say anything, right? I'm, I'm not a scientist. I'm a spiritual scientist, but I'm not a scientist of, you know, whether COVID and all these questions. I'm not a scientist of whether you should be marching or not. That's not my question. And that's not even the point of our, today's conversation. The real point of today's conversation is how do you stay aligned with your soul's purpose? How do you stay aligned with the truth of who you are, regardless of what's happening in the world? 
regardless of what's happening around you, regardless of what the news says, regardless of what your parents say or your family says, right? How do you stay aligned with the truth? Now, this is where we get into some sketchy, sketchy territory because what can often happen here is that Robert Frost has that poem, two roads diverged in a wood and I chose the one less taken. I love that poem. And, and the road less taken the road mostly taken for spiritual people is spiritual bypass. And when we get to this point in the conversation, right? They're like, la, 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 all is well. We don't have to talk about white supremacy. We don't have to talk about homophobia. We don't have to talk about trans black women are dying more than anyone else. We don't have to talk about this, right? We don't have to talk about uh, patriarchy. Da, da, da. Everything is love and light. That's the road mostly taken. Now, you know, but that's not the road I take, right? The road I take is diving into the part that you are uncomfortable with, diving into the part that you don't want to talk about, diving into the part that you are terrified about. And whether that's your family story, whether that's your uh, trauma history, whether that's the state of the world that we're in and you don't know what to do and you don't know what to say and you don't know how to stay aligned to your mystic mission and your sacred purpose, because your sacred purpose has no measure of uh, what's better or worse, right? It's all can be true at the same time. It can all be true at the same time and you can still have your mission. It's not about checking out. It's not about disassociating. It's not about pretending it's not happening. It's really about incorporating and integrating all of it. That's the only way that you will be soul powered. That's the only way you will stay in your truth is by integrating all of it your pain, your trauma, your fear, and realizing that your soul is bigger than all of it. Not by pretending, you see, crying, crying. Not by pretending it's not happening. Not by pretend, burying your head in the sand and saying, oh, no, 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 no. I'm just going to pretend this isn't happening. No. And for those of us who have lived with identities, whether that's racial identity, sexual orientation, gender identities, class identities, that are telling you, you're not enough, that there's something wrong, that you have to be or do or achieve in order to be worthy. We can just anoint those lies from the pit of hell right now, right now. We can just baptize those lies from the pit of hell and be done with it, right? There's nothing to prove. There's nothing to have to adjust to. There's nothing to have to compensate for, right? I was raised um, upper middle class, so at, at, by black folk who love black folk, right? So I didn't, wasn't raised with this idea that there was something wrong with being black. And I wasn't raised with this idea that I wasn't worthy of what I wanted. But th that doesn't mean that I had a yellow brick road. Is that a good metaphor? that had a, like a silver spoon in my mouth, right? I've had my own uh, challenges around all kinds of other different things. And that doesn't mean that just because I was raised by black people who love black people, that I didn't, I don't, I wasn't raised in a world of racial apartheid, right? Or a country of racial apartheid. Now, this is an important distinction to make because we often say the world is this. That's not true. It's not true. The, the whole world isn't run by white supremacy, right? The whole world isn't raised by racial apartheid and words have power. So it's an important correction that even though I was raised in a country that has that hierarchy of race and inside of a larger global system of that, it's not true for the whole wide world and it's not true for all of time. And so this is how we know, okay, y'all, this is how we know that it's the creative imagination that we can use to create a new world. For me, it's important when we're talking about anything to look at the length of it, like is, has this always been true? And is it true in the width of it? Is it true everywhere? And if it hasn't always been true and it's not always true everywhere, that means we have the power to change it, right? So for example, if humans are breathing, we need oxygen. We need to inhale oxygen. We need to exhale carbon dioxide. Has that always been true? Yes. Is that true for the test of time? Yes. Okay, so that we just accept that. We accept that. Now, when we say, are white folk the top of uh, 
every single social structure and stratosphere of the world? Has that always been true? Nope. Is that true everywhere on the planet? Nope. <laughs> Which means we can change it, right? We can be change agents. Now I'm not saying so, so this is important to name, which means everything else is changeable too, right? You may not change your need for oxygen, but you can change your perception of yourself in the world. You can change your perception of your power. You can change your perception of your truth. You can stop waiting for someone else to give you permission to anoint you, to baptize you, to say, yes, you are ready. I'm telling you right now, you are ready. You have a mystic mission. You have a soul purpose. You have a calling. And it's not has nothing to do with how you make money. It has nothing to do with raising. It has nothing to do with uh, running a business. It has nothing to do with generating income, right? That's useful. That's helpful. We live in a capitalist economy. But let's apply those rules again. If you were born in uh, 500 BC or you were born in uh, 1000, right? Had, was, were we in capitalist economies? But you, would, you still had a sole purpose, right? You still had a mystic mission. Every single one of us does. Every single being and expression has a purpose, right? But if you were born in a time where capitalism wasn't the lay of the land and you were in a, maybe a barter economy or a trade economy, then you didn't need to run a business from your soul's purpose. You didn't need to make money from your mission. So that's not a universal truth, right? It's not, a, it's not true all over the world and it hasn't been true since the test of time. And the soul is eternal. The soul is unlimited. The soul is unyielding. The soul is endless and timeless, which means what's true for the soul now was true for the soul in 200 BC, which true, was true for the soul a thousand years ago, right? What's true for the soul is true for the soul is true for the soul. That's why it's universal truth right? So it's not based on the economic climate that we're in. It's not based on the who's president. It's not based on who's protesting. It's not based on what the social structure or stratus is. It's based on your soul, which is who you are at your essence and your job, my love, your one and only job is to turn within and listen to it. That's it. It's to remove all blocks, all distractions, all uh, things that are telling you you have to be and do and have and acquire and achieve in order to be worthy of living your soul purpose and to turn within and listen and then step forward every single day into it. So I know I've got some comments, which I did ask for because I want to know how y'all are doing. So let me, let me read the comments. Uh, Anne is feeling tired, frazzled, sad, lonely, hopeful, grateful, inspired. Yes, all of your emotions are welcome. Sharita says, definitely more and better energy this week. Victoria says, I'm depleted this week, checked out from most things. I understand. I'm glad you're here. Michelle says, very spiritually plugged in, lots of time close to the earth. That's the, this is, oh, Michelle, I'm so glad that you are spending time close to the earth. I know that that's like a portal for you and a vortex for you. I'm so glad that you are plugged in. This is, um, what's important, right? Like spirit is always there. Soul is always there. It's never like, okay, I'm gonna check you out. The people are protesting. I'll be back later. No, your soul is always there. And whatever your ways of accessing it, like for Michelle, it's earth, feet on the ground, animals that I would not play with, but she likes to play with them. Snakes and spiders. Do you, I support you hundred percent, but it's not my, <laughs> it's not my way, right? I mean, I did want an albino boa constrictor. I really used to want one so bad, but I digress. I digress. What, where is your portal? Like, where do you drop in? Where are you? What helps you free up? What music is it? What song is it? What dance is it? Is it being in the sun? Is it being in the ocean? Is it being in the woods? Where can you drop in? Because it's not this screen. I mean, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad we're connecting. But, it's, but this isn't going to feed you on a spiritual level in the way that dropping in and surrendering to something greater than you will and might right? It's not going to hold you in this same way. Monica says, I'm feeling more energetic than yesterday. Good. Kali says, today has been a day, not in the best of ways either. Feeling like I'm just going through the motions. Very true. I, under I understand. I hope you can find a place and a way to, to rest and drop in. Maddie says, I'm getting used to making much more radical and immediate moves based on spiritual and instinctual gui guidance much more often. That's it. My doubt has decreased so much and mad it was ever so high. That's, yo, that's the ticket. 
I wish I had a rhyme with ticket. That's the ticket, Lemony Snicket. That is so true, right? I was talking to a friend who I knew 15 years ago, um, we, and we re recently reunited and we chat on Facebook. And uh, so a lot of things have happened in 15 years, as you might imagine, including my very catastrophic and dramatic romantic life, right? Um, which has been my master teachers for me, but also really painful and challenging in a lot of ways. And one of the things I said to her today in our conversation was like, if I had, I'm, I, I'm a very literal person. I'm a very little person. I mean what I say and I say what I mean. And I expect you to do the same, right? But part of my, now I'm a recovered codependent, I'm recovered um, enmeshment, right? This is the family of origin that I grew up in was based on codependence and it had a lot of codependence and enmeshment. So to me, it was like breathing air. I didn't even know I was doing it. I was just, I was just like all up in your business, right? Energetically, emotionally, all up in it. And just like taking that partner with me being literal was a, Molotov cocktail. I don't really know what that is, but I know it's dangerous, okay? And so what, what it meant for me was if you said one thing, even if it didn't feel right in my body, even if I second guessed you, even if I doubted what you were saying was true, I would dismiss my intuitive knowing. I would dismiss my body's wisdom. I would dismiss what, what I knew was actually happening because of the words, right? I would listen to the words more than my own sensation. And the, the distinction I made with this friend was because she was like, you know, you gotta listen to tone of voice and body language. And I was like, nah, that feels like acrobatics to me. That's so much work and so much heavy lifting for me to be like, what does that tone mean? What was their body? I, I can't do it. What is the portal and the key to soul wisdom is your body, right? When my body knew I mean, there's so many things. I've walked in on an ex in bed with someone, right? I know one of my exes cheated on me for months. I mean, so many things. And I knew something was awry, but I was waiting for them to tell me, right? I'd be like, Is, what about this? Is this going on? Do you think so-and-so likes you? Meanwhile, they're having full-grown, full-blown relationships. And I was denying and dismissing what I knew in my own body, what I knew in my own wisdom, what I knew in my own truth, right? And so the, the, the wisdom, how do you ignite your mystic message, your mystic mission in times of chaos can be applied to anything. It can be applied to romantic relationships, friendships, business, the world changing, right? It can be applied to every single thing because the truth is all you have to do, the only thing you have to do is turn your wisdom within and listen to it and trust it. Trust that you know. You may never have the external evidence, right? You may never have the validation or the verification that you want so badly to prove that you were right. But once you start trusting yourself, once you start listening to yourself, you'll start doing it above and beyond everybody else, above and beyond anything else. You will do it at all costs because that is the truth. That's the part of you that's plugged into the divine mind of God, right? And you feel it through your body because you're not this like uh, disconnected head just floating around thinking thoughts. No, you are embodied. And the way to, to anchor in more deeply into your body's wisdom is to listen to it and to learn the language of your body and to figure out exactly what your body is telling you when it's telling you the things that it wants you to know. This is the wisdom, this is the way, because there's nothing and no one outside of you that is more wise about you than you. There's no one more insightful about you than you. There's no one more intuitive about you than you, than you in your body. But part of what happens with trauma recovery and trauma response really is that we check out, we disassociate, we're not in our bodies, we, our head is much safer and, and more fun to play or we, and or we outsource our inner wisdom to people outside of ourselves, whether it's our parents, whether it's our partner, whether it's our friends, right? We're like, oh, you make the decision, you know, you know, I trust your words or I trust whatever the thing is for you that you trust, right? And so it's about learning to trust yourself and be bold and brave in it and then step forward into it no matter what the circumstances are saying because the circumstances are up to interpretation, right? It could be anything. People are gonna have all kinds of interpretations, all kinds of understandings. And it's about when you know you, when you listen to your wisdom and you stop second guessing yourself that you become a rocket ship.
right? That's when you become unstoppable and supercharged. That's when you become super powerful because you have everything that you need already inside of you. You have every single thing. It's about unlocking those locks that have kept you constrained and restricted and outsourcing your wisdom to someone or something outside of you. You don't need to read another book about codependence. I couldn't even get through codependence no more. It didn't resonate with me, right? It was like, nah, yeah, yeah, theory, theory, theory. That's cute. It's good. It's useful. Maybe it's really useful to someone, but it wasn't useful to me because I was like, it was still mechanized, right? It was still this like ABC one, two, three step process. And, and the soul is really more important than anything else. Once you step into your soul, the world opens up. Okay, I know I got some comments. Let me see what y'all talking about. Uh, Anne says, with you in that intense learning and romantic life. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I'm so glad to have graduated from that school because that was really rough. Maddie says, when I find myself not making space to drop in, I'm usually fearfully avoiding a radical movement towards my soul's mission. That's it. When I am making the moves, I am galvanized to make time to drop in. That's it. And then it becomes a rhythm, right? Then you just drop in and there, and then there's not even anything to drop into because you're there, right? You may need a little adjustment, like a chiropractic adjustment, energetic adjustment, but you're not like so over here that you're like, oh, eventually it becomes like, oh, here I am. And then you're just there, right? But it's a practice. It's a daily practice. It's a daily relationship. No matter where you are in the process, you're like, it's more of a, like a subtle adjustment. Like, oh, that didn't feel right. Like I can tell immediately now when something doesn't feel right. And I listen to that above and beyond all else, above and beyond all words. I have di divested from the school of people pleasing. I have been delivered from people in general. Right. If you if we're if we're Facebook friends on my profile, you'll notice that my tone has shifted. Something got freed up in me a couple of weeks ago. Some and I didn't even try. Right. Yay, Elizabeth. I'm glad you're alive. Caught me live, too. I didn't even try. Right. Something freed up where I just was like, I don't care what anybody thinks of me. I'm going to say what I need to say. I'm angry right now. I'm going to speak with anger. I'm sad right now. I'm going to speak with I'm going to speak from the truth of who I am. And this goes back to the beginning of the conversation where we were talking about uh, spiritual bypassing. Fuck that shit, right? Like I'm not here to like make other people feel good. I'm not here to like soothe anyone's ego. I'm not here to stroke anyone's percep ego egoic perception of themselves. I'm here to be a lighthouse and a beacon, right? You might get your feelings hurt because I'm a direct communicator. I'm not going to hold your hand. I don't hold grown folks hands. For those of you who have worked with me either in groups or one-on-one, -on -one, it's not that I'm mean. I'm not mean, but I'm also holding you in your power. I see you in your wholeness. I see you in your truth. I see you in your fullness. You don't need me, another grown person, to hold your hand into your becoming. Hold your own hand. This is where you learn how to self-partner. And then you stop people pleasing, right? When you learn how to self-partner and you learn that you are your own best thing, as Tori, Toni Morrison said in Beloved, when you learn that you are the one that you've been waiting for, as June Jordan said in her poem, we are the ones we have been waiting for, which has been said many times, but June Jordan said it first, a Jamaican-American Caribbean queer poet who has passed away now, who, an ancestor, but she said it first, we are the ones we have, we've been waiting for. Um, when you know that you are your own savior, when you know that your soul is your own beacon and lighthouse and you just have to turn to and align to it, you don't need me to coddle you, right? Then you won't need me to like soothe and coddle and stroke you. Then you're like, yes, we are in co-creation together, right? We are partners together, right? We are stepping into power together to create a new world. This group is called the Modern Mystic Movement for Revolutionary Leaders, right? The modern mystic movement for revolutionary leaders. Every single word was chosen with intentionality, right? Revolutionary leaders, right? Not reactionary leaders, not regressed leaders, revolutionary leaders. I'm here to be a mirror and a reflection and inspiration for you, but not to be your coddler, 
right? And so I'm going to communicate directly. We all grown, right? We're all grown and we're here to do the work of the soul. We're here to do the work that's calling us forward. That's the big work. That's the holy work. And if, and you have to do your shadow work too, because in the shadow is all that shit you try to avoid. And the shadow is all that stuff you try to pretend wasn't happening. And um, in the shadow is all that pain that you tried to brush under the carpet and pretend like, no, I'm revolutionary, I'm a healer, I'm a mystic. No, boo, you can't do that. It's only gonna go so far if you don't do your shadow work too. If you don't look at all those places and parts of you that you've disowned. It's like having a dog on a leash and Tie, but the end of a leash is tied to something and maybe the leash is super long and the dog's like, I'm free. I've got all these things to do, I'm free. But whoop, at a certain point, the dog's done get jerked back because it's not actually free, right? You gave yourself some rope doing some good work, but if you don't dive into the parts of you that you have disowned, disclaimed, forgotten about, hidden, tried to ignore, you're gonna get caught up and jerked back because you're not actually free, right? This is the power. This is the power when you dive into the shadow, when you own all those unwanted parts, when you say this is painful and scary and I'm gonna own it and love it anyway, and I'm gonna own and love myself anyway, you become unstoppable. And the external chaos becomes irrelevant. The external chaos becomes life. Life is chaotic. Life is what it is, right? You can't control life but you can control your experience with it. You can control your relationship with it. You cannot get caught up with it. You cannot make meaning out of it and you can keep following the truth of who you are and what you're here to do. In fact, that's the only thing you can do. That's the only thing you can do to be, that's the only thing you can do. But when you do that, it makes you a beacon. It makes you a lighthouse. It makes you a stand for something, right? Now we are in this age, this very unprecedented age, not only because of COVID, but because there's so much performance politics right now. So much, I don't wanna get it wrong right now. And all of that's distraction and bullshit too. All of it, right? Because it has nothing to do with your soul's purpose. Your, your soul knows you can never get it wrong. And so you just gotta tell the truth. You just gotta show up whole. You just gotta show up every day. You just got to do what you're here to do and be who you're here to be and stop because all of that posturing is still people pleasing. All of that, like, I don't want to say anything wrong. I don't want to hurt people's feelings. Black Lives Matter. That I, but you never said a word about Black Lives Matter before. All of that is collective people pleasing. All of that is collecto e collective ego stroking, not for your own well-being, but to save your ass because you don't want anyone to call you out. My business coach is like, I don't know and I'm learning, right? This is why I've hired her. I hired her way before all this, but this is why I respect her and enough to hire her because she's like, I don't know and I'm figuring it out and I'm actively figuring it out and this is what I'm learning, right? I trust that way more than all these people sliding up into my inbox recently talking about white supremacy and Black Lives Matter and have never talked about race a day before in their lives. And let me tell you how many people I have unsubscribed from because immediately I don't trust you. Immediately. I've lived as a black woman all of every single day of my life. Now, I haven't always thought of myself in a racialized way when I'm like three years old, right? Like uh, that wasn't my experience. But I, like I said a few minutes ago, I grew up with, I was raised by black people who love black people. So I've always been taught black history, American history, African history, right? I've always been raised in a community and a culture that talked about race. And my mother is 70 something years old. She spent over 35 years as an organizational, organizational consultant, the principal of her own uh, business going into companies, nonprofits, government organizations, uh, for-profits, talking about race, talking about diversity, talking about gender, talking about sexuality for over 30 years. This is the woman who raised me. So I've been, I was raised in the household talking about this my entire life. These are not new conversations for me, which again, if you haven't seen my why I don't talk about race in my business video, why you couldn't pay me enough. The emotional label required is not what I want to do, right? 
So these aren't new conversations to me. These aren't new, innovative, revolutionary, radical ideas. I'm old hand, I'm old hand. But if you are just now stepping into this conversation, please don't position yourself as an expert. Please don't position yourself as someone who has something to say about it. Just listen, just listen. There's so many teachers who have things to say, who are vetted and well-versed and have things to, to teach, right? So I say all this to say, it can be a massive distraction. Not to say avoid it, but to stay anchored in your truth, stay anchored in who you are, stay anchored in what you know, and be open and available to learn and grow and expand and evolve. You can't do that pretending like something doesn't exist. It exists, right? And it's a social construction, which means it exists because we as a society have created it socially, right? But, it, but it, so you can't be like, oh no, I don't wanna talk about whatever the challenge is because it's hard stuff. Yeah, boo, it's hard stuff. But if you're a revolutionary leader, which is why this group is called the Modern Mystic Movement for Revolutionary Leaders, the Modern Mystic Movement means you are aligned with soul first. Revolutionary leaders means that you are a beacon for others, right? Second, not you are a beacon for others trying to make sure you say the right thing and do the right thing and then call it leadership and then be like, oh, what did spirit say? No, that's, that's not it. Align with soul and spirit first, then take soul aligned action from that place. Any questions? I'm gonna look at comments. Let me know if any questions, thoughts. Uh, woo, 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 woo. Let's see. I adore you too, Michelle. Really appreciate being seen. Been working a program on codependency and trauma. Been opening up to my blind spots, starting each day speaking with the trees and water and getting lots of guidance from the animals. You know, though, that's, that's my favorite thing. That's all I want to, to know because this is the thing. We live, our society is jacked up, right? It's upside down, inside out. It is, it is for so many reasons. But the real reason, the real tea, is that we have tried to synthesize nature in the computer or the phone or the what inside and you got to get outside put your feet on the earth go to the water talk to the animals breathe the air feel the sun on your skin you cannot simulate that you cannot duplicate that you cannot replicate that that is what that is part of this ever expanding good that is you that is you and this is the, the thing when we have so much sanitized spirituality that's disconnected it's like i'm just going to think and think and meditate and like and I, I meditate every day don't get me wrong i'm not saying anything negative about meditation but the the practices that i come from the teachers that i've learned from are feet on the ground indigenous teachers indigenous american teachers indig indigenous african teachers indigenous indian teachers who get outside and breathe who talk to the trees, who talk to their ancestors, who put their hands in the water and know that it is alive, who put their hands on the trees and know that it is alive and know that we are all one and all connected. It's not this sanitized, like differentiated theoretical spirituality. It's an embodiment of who you are. That's the thing. I love hearing this, Michelle. Thank you. Noticed here for it. That's an amen. Ret retrograde energy yes 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 clear and direct communication yes 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 do i recommend shadow seeking tools hmm that's an interesting question indigo tell me more tell me more um tell me more oh i'm glad kali yes yes shelly says so true people are reacting to current events and it's not even their own actions and thoughts exactly exactly they just don't want to be judged because they are part of the problem if they aren't reacting. Yes, it's, that's not leadership. That's following the herd of people in fear who don't know themselves. That's the, that is exactly it, Shelly. When I opened up my Amazon Prime and I was, it saw Black Lives Matter and Spotify, Black Lives Matter, and I was like, Black Lives Matter two weeks ago, though. Like, why is this just the thing that we're hopping on? And I'm, I, I have found myself being very cynical and... My friend told me that it's COVID quarantine that's making me cynical, that I'm really not a cynical person. So I, I find peace in that. But I just find myself being like, you know, now that I started really listening to myself, right? Like now I'm in the practice for years now, but 
I'm like, I don't buy it. You can't, I'm, that's not convincing. And I don't need it to be convincing, right? I don't need it to be convincing. But what I did do, because the book I was looking for on Amazon was full price. It, I, rem- I was like, oh my goodness, my, favorites, my favorite feminist bookstore why, in Atlanta. Why don't I, the country's oldest feminist bookstore, why don't I call them and order order my the book I'm looking for from them directly? And I, everyone in Atlanta calls me Elle. I lived there for 12 years. And I called the bookstore today and the, one of the co-owners, co-owners opened, answered the call. And she said, Karis Books and More, this, it, Karis Books and More, how can I help you? And I said, who am I speaking with? And she said, Sarah, is this L? She said, Sarah, is this L? And I said, it is L, right? And it just brought tears to my eyes. And then one of the other co-owners, Angela, Sarah said, Sarah was, after we had our check chat, she passed, she was like, Angela, L's on the phone. She wants to place a book order. And she, Angela said, our L and again, tears in my eyes, right? And I was like, why am I not calling and ordering my books from them all of the time, right? Even telling the story, I'm like, yeah, I am your L, right? And you are mine. We are community. We are, we belong together, right? This is, this is not Amazon, right? There, I don't know that, ooh, yeah, y'all, here we go. They don't need to put Black Lives Matter on their website or anything because they've always known that. They have courses, they have classes, they have workshops, they have white, they have a, you know, white parenting, something, something. I mean, they have for years, for decades, it's who they be. It's how they've always been. It's how they've always moved for the world. So they don't need platitudes of Black Lives Matter because it's who they are. This is why I trust them, right? For decades, right? The convenience of Amazon, sure, that's cute but I believe in them and they've had to fight tooth and nail to get to where they are. And the great news was today when I talked to them, they were like, we've been busier than ever, right? We've been busier than ever. And I'm like, I'm adding to your busyness. So this is all part of this. How do you do it? You align to your truth and you keep living in every single day. You keep doing, excuse me, you keep doing what you're here to do every single day, 20, how old is the bookstore? I think 35, 40 years old. 40 years ago, they weren't going to be like, they weren't like, there's going to be a COVID crisis. People are going to be home. Amazon's going to happen. This is going to do, and then we'll make a book. No, they just kept showing up every day, feminist programming, every day, feminist classes, every day. I learned so much and I am such an integral part, even though I'm in California and they're in Atlanta, right? I'm, they are such an integral part of me and I am them. So this is what I want for you too. This is what the presence I want for you to create in the world, to create, to be a beacon, to be a lighthouse, right? All these comments that I'm reading that are like, okay, thank you for the breath of fresh air. Thank you for the, like the relief that you feel connected in the community here in this Facebook group. I'm so glad that I can be that beacon and that lighthouse for you. Because if I were trying to ebb and flow and people please and adjust my message or adjust my mission just to be liked, I would feel so out of integrity. I couldn't do it. I, could, I wouldn't be able to function, right? I wouldn't be able to be of service. You wouldn't become and get that feeling of refreshment or empowerment or being seen. You wouldn't remember, right? It would feel like the rat race, which I'm not here for, right? So I want to remind you that you have all the power you will ever need inside of you. Hey, Mashadi. Thank you. Look them up. Karis Books. Yes. Yes, 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 right? This is really important. This is really important. My nose is running, excuse me. Um, so this is, this is how you live your mystic mission in the midst of chaos, is that you keep turning to self and soul. You keep turning to, to aligning to the mind of God. You stop getting distracted by distractions and you recognize them as distractions. You stop outsourcing your power to anyone or anything else, whether that's an institution or a person, because people make up institutions, right? You stop doing this. Maddie says, people who have been doubting my ongoing divestment from status quo fuckery are now listening to me in an unprecedented way and it feels good. This is what I'm saying. Exactly. They don't even understand why they're receptive. No time to understand, but they are. I'm experiencing being the embodiment of a catalyst and it feels good. 
I applaud you, Maddie. So proud of you. So proud of you. You are, you are a catalyst. You are a beacon and a lighthouse and a catalyst. Yes, and says the whole time. This whole time is giving me a deep invitation to let go of any parts of my identity that are people pleasing, pr proving, performing. Exactly. You could go down the laundry list of P's. There's so much, so much there. Performing. Ooh, I was on this, um, on this Instagram live the other day and I forgot what the account was. I can't remember, but he goes live and he reads from a black mystic or a spiritual teacher every Sunday. And one of the things he said, which struck me like an arrow to my heart was capitalism is performance. Capitalism is performance. Capitalism requires performance. Capitalism requires pretending. Capitalism requires uh, posturing, right? It requires putting on. I went to Cuba, y'all. I went to Cuba years ago uh, by myself. <laughs> Welcome, this is Laren. I went to Cuba by myself, illegally, not speaking Spanish for three weeks. I got a, <laughs> I got my visa through a Canadian travel agency, flew to Mexico, and then took a Russian plane to Cuba for three weeks by myself, not speaking Spanish because I was like, we live on a planet. Who's going to tell me where I can and cannot go on the planet we all occupy? That's not how this works. I'm going to go. I'm going to make a way. And I did. Um, oh, gosh. What was, what was I? Oh, so when I came back. Now, one of the things I loved, I loved many, 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 many things about Cuba. But one of the things I loved most was it's, as a communist country, there are no commercials. There are no billboards. There are no... Hey, Tori, there are no things selling anything. It was so refreshing with such a mind ease to not see things for sale all the time, to not be told, um, being trying to be convinced of something all the time. My brain just like chilled, right? And it felt honest. Now, I don't mean that Cubans don't lie, right? I'm not, Cubans, I'm sure people lie, but it but didn't have this, bait and switch masquerade that capitalism in, engenders that's like credit, that's like buying things you can't afford, that's like putting on airs as if you are something, right? It's a, there's an honesty when there's no capitalism because it, you, what you see is what you get. What you see is what you get. And it, it was so, it was like a palate cleanser. I, I was like, oh yeah, this building, is hasn't had a paint job in a couple of decades this building has right like it was just like people are driving around 60 70 year old cars okay like it was just like the reality was evident it wasn't hiding behind the illusion and so when he said the other day capitalism is performance as a matter of fact he also lived in cuba for or no he lived in brazil anyway um it was so refreshing. So I want you to consider that as you're divesting. How can you be more authentic? How can you be more true? It's also, we live in a capitalist economy. So if you require capital, I'm not saying, you know, like try and be a barter economy in capitalism. That is beyond my, my uh, range. But I will say you can divest from those practices of capitalism that require you to feel like you have to be someone that you're not in order to tell the truth because you are always worthy. You are born worthy. You are born worthy. You are born worthy. Your soul is here to be expressed in, as, and through you. That's it, that's all, right? That's it, that's all. There's nothing you have to do to earn it. You don't have to wear a special necklace. You don't have to chant a certain amount of times. I mean, those may be vehicles to access it, but you don't have to do it. My practice is I want to be able to sit in a room with no tools or trinkets and be able to drop into the divine. Always. Always. A friend of mine recently moved from the Pacific Northwest to LA and I talked to her a few days ago. And in their move, their, um, their truck was their moving truck was broken into, all these things were stolen and including like her crystals and her tarot cards and all these things. And she was like, you know, these have been my most important sacred items. Now I've had many things stolen. I also lost many things over the years. But my thought is like, 
none of those should, those are not gatekeepers. Those are not gate holders. They do not keep you from connecting with your soul and your spirit and the divine. You should be able to drop in no matter where you are, no matter what you do, no matter what you have access to, period. All the rest are just accoutrement. All the rest are just frosting on the cake, right? All right, my loves, that's what I got to say today. Any questions, any thoughts, anything I can speak more directly to? Uh, Maddie says, I've lived in countries and in no other place and in the news, is the news entertainment. It's boring. You better speak on it. That's the truth right there. It's a boring, simple reporting <laughs> of events. That's it. That's it. Ooh. All right, y'all. Looks like we've covered everything. I want to, um, before we pop off, before we jump off, I, there's something that I've decided to do very recently. Um, that it's called Map Your Mystic Mission. Very excited about this. It's called Map Your Mystic Mission. I feel like a little girl because when I was little, you know, they pull back. Okay, there we go. I would have my like fluffy things. Um, map your mystic mission. Now, this is the thing. I have an offering called Divining, which is three days, in, all inclusive, in person. You get chauffeur pickup from the airport, three, do, three days hotel, um, all expenses paid. All I mean, not all expenses paid. You have to get to wherever we are. All meals covered. And then we do three days of deep dive divining. Now, with COVID, I'm not doing no divining, right? But divining is for when you're ready to go deep, connect with your soul's purpose and really live it in the world. And we have three days incubators together. But I decided to come with a modern mystic mission, which is three days virtual, three days virtual together. You get me and you together for three days to really map your mystic mission, to really uncover who you are, what you're here to do, how you're here to do it. It's broken up into four sessions. Let me find my notes. Session one is your mystic mission and vision, where we dive deep into soul work using ritual, using spiritual practice, to really dive deep into uncovering who you are and what you're here to do. Listening to your soul and getting crystal clear about your mission. Even more clear, even if you're like, I already know what I'm doing. We get even more clear. We listen to the ancestors. We listen to earth. We listen to nature. We drop deep into what your mission and purpose is. That's the where we begin, right? Always. Then met number two, session number two is your mystic message. Because you can know what your purpose is and not necessarily know how to communicate it, not necessarily know how to be that, not necessarily know how to embody that, and not necessarily know what you're here to tell the world, right? You can be it. But what's your message? What's the truth that you're here to share right here and right now? How are you here to share it with the world? So that's session two. Session three is your mystic movement. Your mystic movement, how are you galvanizing? How are you activating? How are you bringing people along with you into your mystic message, right? And then act, uh, uh, session number four is your mystic momentum. How do you build energy around this? How do you build momentum around it in a day-to-day -day life where it's not chasing, re recreating the wheel, where it's not following the corporate structure, right? Where it's not, you're like, I quit my corporate job, now I'm doing my own thing, and you're recreating the same thing. Mm -mm. This is about aligning with your soul and yourself to create momentum in a way that feels actually really, really good to you. And I wanna tell you why I decided to, the, to do this. I do courses all the time, I love teaching, but I also have been really missing going deep with people. I love going deep. I love creating a powerful, sacred container to go really, really deep. And my work started out over 20 years ago in person going really deep. And I haven't been able to go deep because of COVID and social distancing and I've been living abroad. And so this is my way to create a deep container that will support your mystic mes message and mission and movement and momentum so that you can really do it. And this is really perfect if you're an entrepreneur or you want to be an entrepreneur and you want to start it out and do it in a way that feels aligned to you and aligned to your soul. We meet Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it's a, it's, I've gotten emails who want to work with me and, and are looking for ways to work together on the weekend. So this is a great, my map held me 
my nap held me longer than expected. I'll be go to the beginning and listen. Just want to come in and say, hey, and I love you. Love you too, Tori. Thank you. The Mystic Mission sounds amazing. Yes, I say yes to you welcoming the resources to sign up too. Thank you. I would love that. Oh, I would love that. So mystic map your mystic mission y'all know i love some alliteration right map your mystic mission it's three days you get to choose the three days starting in july so you already know right this is good if you want to map your message if you want to make money with your message and your mission and do it in a way that feels like who you actually are who you truly are in your soul who you are to here to be the message that you're here to deliver and you can stop looking to all these internet gurus and marketing experts and trying to shift their directions to fit you. When I first started my business, and even sometimes now, when I really, well, when I really first started my business and I had no idea what I was doing, I knew two camps, right? There was like the online entrepreneur camp, which included like Marie Ford Leo, Danielle Laporte, those folks. And then there were my people who were my healers, my teachers, my artists, my mystic people whose medicine I believed and knew who didn't know how to make money. So they were amazing, powerful healers, leaders, artists, and they were scrambling and scraping by to make money. And then there were people who were making money who I didn't necessarily know how good they actually were, but they knew how to market. And so Map Your Mystic Mission, is it's taken me a long time. I started my business online 12 years ago, right? Started doing this work 20 years ago offline, but it's taken me a long time to bring together. How do I hold the wisdom of that? I know and teach what I teach and be who I be and also run a thriving, successful business. How do I bring those together so that I'm not scraping by so that I can live in integrity and live in my truth and not people please and follow the drinking gourd to freedom, right? Follow my own path and still make money and still run a business and still live location independent and still have the home that I like and the lifestyle that I want to be in, right? And so this is what we, part of what we'll do in Map Your Mystic Mission is to help you map it out in a way that aligns and feels true to who you are and make money and bring your mission and bring your message to the world. So the bonuses are you get a gift. Hi, Impress. You get a care package. So we'll have our first uh, call before the the three days as a way to like get to know each other, right? I'll ask you questions, da 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 da. Then you'll get a care package in the mail with all kinds of like teas and trinkets and snacks and gifts. Now, I didn't say that I don't love those things. I love those things. I just don't think you need to rely on them, right? And I wanna give you a care package. So you'll get a care package in the mail and then we'll have our three days together and deep dive and you'll leave it with clarity about who you are and what you're here to do. You'll leave with a practice, a way to live it every single day, a purpose and a game plan for your business, a game plan for your work in the world, a game plan for your spiritual mission and practice. So um, the, I will drop the link below because I haven't even fleshed out the sales page for it. That'll probably come later today or tomorrow. I haven't fleshed out the sales page, but it's $5,000 for the weekend, which is very different than the 15,000 for divining. I charged 15,000, but that was in person, right? It was all all expenses paid. So it's $5,000 for the three days together. And um, I'm only taking two people. I'm only doing two people because the level of like spiritual, emotional, and energetic labor that it's gonna go into creating this fantastic experience for you, I don't wanna spread myself too thin. I wanna be really, really emotionally and energetically and spiritually available to give you a revolutionary experience so that you hit the ground running, right? And we can talk about all kinds of things, not about inclusion and inclusion and diversity because eh, I'm not here for it, but we can talk about like, how do you bring all voices into to the four in your business how can you be who you actually are on a spiritual level on a social level on a practical level how can you integrate all the things that actually matter right and so this is if you also are talking about how can i uh, adjust or learn and expand my business in this particular time and take yourself to the next level so it's five thousand dollars for the three days map your mystic mission with me, I'll drop more information. I'll drop the the link below, um, but also I'll hopefully come up with a sales page later today or tomorrow. And I'm only taking two spots. So thank y'all for being here with me. 
so much love. Let me know if you have any questions before I uh, close for the day. Lots and lots of love. And I'm going to drop the um, Imani Uzuri video. If you've been here since the beginning, you know what I'm talking about. All right. Mwah! Lots of love. I'll see you soon. Bye.